Okay, never in my life would I have believed that one day I'm able to open up my bedroom door and the view from there is the freaking highest building in the world. <laughs> Friends, welcome to Dubai. We are Joe and Lizu, and in this video, we will be discovering the world's most luxurious city. You will see the places and buildings that make Dubai so unique. Learn how to avoid common scams. How can I be sure that you won't scam me? But also how to get most value out of every dollar you spend in the city. It's 25 cents, pretty freaking awesome. And of course, throughout the whole journey, we'll be sharing with you our honest thoughts. How it actually feels like budget traveling in a city that has publicly said how it will only cater to luxury tourists. Never in my life before have I felt bad that I'm not really, really rich. We started our adventure about an hour after sunrise. And well, what better place to start today's adventure than in the very center of the city, next to the landmark that is the most famous of that part of the world. This part of town is a really good representation of what Dubai wants to appear to the rest of the world. It has pretty streets, is always kept clean by hundreds of janitors working around the clock. And there's just no way around it. In the very center of it lays the world's tallest building. Okay, here's the thing. Nobody bloody ever tells you how hard it is to capture this thing on a camera. It's so much bigger than everything else that the only way to do it is something like this. <laughs> it's, it's almost 900 meters into the sky. Um, sorry for this. The height of Burj Khalifa is actually 828 meters. But you probably know that us guys, we sometimes tend to exaggerate when it comes to sizes of things. Anyways, to enter Burj Khalifa, it is advised to pre-buy a ticket online. And since the first ticket available for us was only on the following day, we knew we needed to come back. But well, waiting 24 hours, what might as well be the best view in the world, didn't seem like a high price to pay. And so, we decided to continue our day by experiencing some free activities around the tower itself. Next to me here is Dubai Fountain. And every 30 minutes, there's a little water show where a world-famous song plays on the speakers and streams of water dance to its rhythm. Yeah, of course it wasn't this song, but due to the copyright laws, we can't really show you the original one. Oops. Uh -oh. The fountain was also the place where we first time understood what having money actually means in Dubai. It was made, $20, $5 get to sit there. Money gets you a little bit better seat. Just behind the fountain lays what is likely the most visited place in the whole city. Last year, 105 million people walked through these doors. And well, Dubai Mall goes all out to attract more and more visitors each year. The place has 1,200 stores. The place feels just so luxurious. An actual dinosaur skeleton more than 100 places to drink and eat. Uh, this is the third Starbucks I've seen in this mall. We've been here 10 minutes. Live waterfalls and even a bloody indoor aquarium. To get in there, in the tunnel, you have to pay close to $50. But I'm not really sure if like $50 to just walk through the tunnel would be worth it for me. I'm really grateful that we can see it for free as well from here. And of course, pretty malls are far from the only reason how Dubai wants to have this reputation of a shopping capital. The tax here is only 5% and if you're a tourist, then when you're leaving the country, you can actually get even this 5% back. So you can buy things here without tax. For example, technology, new phones are hundreds and hundreds of dollars cheaper than they are in US or, or Europe. So yes, it's definitely not hard to spend money in this mall. But as the point of this video is to show you how not to spend a fortune in this city, we had to move on. Just having a quick look. If we wanted to grab an Uber now to the Gold Souk, it would be 60 locals, so $15. But there is a cheaper way to travel around to buy as well. Buses, trains and metro efficiently cover the whole city. 
in pretty much every tram and bus station, there's a thing and you can get a ticket from here. As we arrived in our next destination, straight away, we felt a strange relief. We've made it to Pur Dubai, which uh, literally translates into old Dubai. It's a historic part of town and, well, it's a must-see in this place because around here you really see where the city started, what it came from and how it became what it is today. This part of town felt much more calm and real compared to the city center made of concrete and glass. This looks so peaceful. This is so nice and different vibe from the city that I would expect to have here. It's like a different world. It was truly enjoyable just to walk between the sand-colored houses. Nice cafes, nice little souvenir stores and even the smells were much more earthly. It smells like camel. Is there camels here? Of course there's camels here. Old Dubai is separated into two parts by what is called the Dubai Creek. There's so many traditional boats here. I hope we can go and get, get a ride on one of those. And crossing the creek on a traditional boat Abra costs only 25 cents per person. Without joking, this ticket is most likely the cheapest thing in a whole city. Yeah, it costs almost nothing. And a five minute ride across the water is really a lovely experience. It gives you a totally new angle to see the city, and if you're lucky, even marine life. Honestly, if it wasn't for the rude and pushy salesman, I would probably say it was my favorite part of town. But, well, trying to enjoy the silk and spice market really was a challenge. Jens Bonds. You look like Jens Bonds. <laughs> Jen, who's Jens this Bonds? This is shot. First, for a reason not known to mankind, they all tried to approach us with exactly the same strategy. Jack Sparrow, are you? Jack Sparrow? Jack Sparrow. Jack Sparrow. Do I really look like Jack Sparrow? Why would you call me Jack Sparrow? You're looking like Jack Sparrow. Does Lizu look like Jack Sparrow? Yeah. She's also. She's also Jack Sparrow. <laughs> but what pushed me over the edge was when they started touching me. Yeah? Why, why are you touching me? On one occasion, a local gentleman literally had to come to our aid so that we would be able to move on. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. There really isn't a better way to describe what is happening on those markets than as deeply disturbing. Yeah, the guys are just pushy, touchy. Some way I was called Chucksboro for like six times, seven times. Fortunately, the atmosphere on the world-famous gold market was much more civil. Now here on the gold soup, it kind of feels like it fits very well in Dubai. The place was full of precious stones, gold, silver. Being in this market and trying to look at the gold and, and the jewelry, it really hurts your eyes, they're sparkling so much. And there's a reason why tourists come here to shop from all over the world. It was said that the gold here is supposed to be one of the cheapest to buy. <laughs> See what they did there? It was accidental. <laughs> and of course it just would not be Dubai if they hadn't hidden something around here that just happens to be the biggest in the world. The world's biggest ring. Honestly seeing it, like I could barely get my hands around it. I'm starting to like doubt the meaning and definition of ring. Around this area, a lot of free museums can also be found. Coffee museum, women's museum, the Dubai Municipality Museum, they're all free. They don't look very good on video, so we're gonna not show you them, but if you're here, museums in the city, of course, go for it. It was truly interesting to see what Dubai might have looked like in the past. But to understand how the city looks today, we had to make our way to another landmark. You have three wishes. Your wish is my command. Sugary drinks, please. Your wish is my command. Oh, sorry for this one. Two wishes left. What's the second one? Dubai frame, please. Your wish is my command. Dubai frame. Yeah, that is what I meant. Let's go. I know it sounds like that's the theme of today's video, but uh, 
this thing over there just so happens to be the world's biggest frame. I honestly didn't know that it is even a category, like I haven't seen any other frames in other parts of the world, but there's no denying it. This thing is freaking huge! But all jokes aside, it's actually quite a beautiful place, surrounded by a stunning green space. This colossal square really catches your eye. 95 meters wide, 150 meters high. It's, it's extremely hard to capture in one picture. And after about 30 minutes in a line, we were ready to ride an elevator to the top. And you should also know that of course, like in most places in Dubai, if you're willing to pay extra for the VIP price, you can simply skip the line. I'm afraid of heights and this just makes me feel super weird. 150 meters down. The view from the top of the frame was magnificent. It is located quite far from the rest of the skyscrapers and so offers a great place to see the whole city in one frame. And as we were enjoying this sight, I found it hard to imagine how good would the view be from the top of the world's highest building that we had booked for the next day. By the time the elevator brought us back on the ground, we had gotten hungry. And if you don't wish to spend a fortune on fancy restaurants, then there are pretty much two good options to fill your belly. One of the places to do this is a mall food court. For $10 a person, you, get, you can get the belly full. Yes, maybe the food is not that healthy. There's a lot of junk food here. Sugar I drink. And next to food courts and the malls, the second cheap option to get ready-made meals are local restaurants. There's so many foreign workers in this country and a lot of them have created their own restaurants. And we are gonna go and try this one there. This sort of restaurants offer delicious and authentic meals for quite affordable prices. Most dishes again are around $10 and they just look amazing. And since Dubai is such an international place, there is something for every taste. The first day had just flown by and to our surprise we had only spent around $30 per person. But at the same time we felt like we had seen quite a lot. Yet as the sun was going down, together with cool experiences, there was a strange feeling that this city had sparked in us. I think I just have to say that never in my life before have I felt bad that I'm not really, really rich, that I don't want to pay five times more for the same experience, but like 20 meters away from, from where the VIPs sit. But I kind of get the feeling that the whole city is built on it, that yeah. Yet little did I know that these feelings were only the beginning of something much bigger. Our plan for the second day in Dubai was quite straightforward. We wanted to visit the world's tallest building, but also wish to experience a totally different side of modern Dubai's culture. And for this, we headed to the seaside. As soon as we got there, things turned crazy fast. Jesus Christ, they're all running from, for us. Salesmen started throwing themselves in front of our car and suddenly we felt like we were back on the market. Honestly, it was so scary that we drove right past our destination. <laughs> what the heck was that? That was so crazy, I, I don't even feel like going back there. We took a little breather and after reading the reviews online, it felt like we were walking into a scam. The thing we're gonna do now in Dubai is like 50-50 that we're gonna get ripped off, scammed and, and totally violated. Those places had the worst Google reviews we had ever seen. Do not, do go, not there. Go, there. go there, don't go there, scam. worst scam. jet ski experience scam. ever. Yet as the jet ski rental prices were four times cheaper compared to the rest of Dubai's beaches, we still took a risk and wanted to try it out. How can I be sure that you won't scam me? We tried our best to follow every rule in a book and avoid being cheated. How much? 150 dirham. How long? Yeah, 30 minutes. No, no way. Bargained ourselves the best possible price. 35. 35 
And soon, we're on the water. Not my first rodeo. It was my first time on a jet ski, and it sort of felt like a motorbike on water. It was fun, and offered a very different way to see Dubai from this angle. If otherwise, in Islamic countries, public affection is not allowed, then jet ski is a way around it. Once our half hour was over, we gave back the machine and understood that if you're careful yourself, riding a jet ski can be quite a cheap and fun experience. Okay, sorry for mistrusting you. You do a great job. <laughs> Thank you, man. <laughs> that was cool. Didn't break the bank either. 19 euros for half an hour on the water, two people. That was cool. Yet of course, Dubai's modern beach culture does not end with jet skis. Over the last 30 years, Dubai's Arabic culture has mixed a lot with other Western cultures. And although this city is mainly Islamic, then year by year, it has started to develop a reputation as a beach destination. Yet as we wanted to visit the beautiful beaches near one of Dubai's most famous buildings, Burj Al Arab, the Arabian Tower, we quickly understood that even most beaches here are only for paying customers. Just trying to find a way to the beach. It got frustrating fast. <laughs> We've walked one and a half kilometers. Everything is private, everything is closed. And finally, I decided to bluntly walk in and guide us through one of the luxury hotels. I'm really not sure if it's allowed, but at least it got us to the seaside. It was a lovely place with very beautiful views. And there it lies. It's built in a shape of a boat. And there has been rumors that it's like the only seven star hotel in the world. But here's the thing. Rating hotels is in a five-star system, so calling this a seven-star, it's a very, very good publicity stunt, but uh, it's a five-star hotel. Total luxury. Some say it's the best in the world. Like, we haven't heard that one before, right? Biggest, best. That's the theme of this city. But while walking between people who had paid at least $500 a day to be able to use this beach, I suddenly realized why I hadn't fallen in love with this city, just like so many other visitors do each year. After all, on the surface level, it might seem like a perfect place. It is always kept clean, extremely safe, and by some standards, also quite beautiful. Yet to me, it took only a few days to understand that this city simply doesn't share the values that I do. And I guess what bothered me the most was how Dubai seemed to be designed to glorify wealth and money on every step. Kindness and humility seemed like second-class citizens in this metropole. Yet of course, there was still one thing that could change my mind. Well, 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 well. It's been a crazy few days here in Dubai and uh, yeah, there's one more thing to do. That thing over there. Without a doubt, it's going to be the most expensive thing we've done in the city. But it's just weird to leave this, this place without visiting its most famous structure. Our ticket to the tower cost about $45 and it was booked for one o'clock. We arrived around 45 minutes before our assigned time. And as we got there, there seemed to be a small queue in front of us. I'm slowly starting to get used to waiting in lines. It's been a very long time, but in this city, it seems to be everywhere. It didn't seem like a big problem, but as the time passed, we slowly started to realize that the whole place was built in a way so that you wouldn't understand how long the line actually is. Getting to this point has taken us 45 minutes. And this one here says 45 minutes more. It ran around corners and always made you feel like the elevator was just behind the next bend. Paying more helps you skip the line. It was quite clear that the time on our ticket was worth as much as medium rare steak in a vegetarian restaurant. This guy over there keeps telling everybody to get closer, get closer, so if you can't smell the person in front of you, you're too far. That's nasty. 
We ended up waiting nearly two hours only to get up the tower. But even the viewing platform up there didn't offer much relief. Most people up there had waited hours to make it so far. And each and every one of them wanted to get their money's worth. It's so crowded. People have absolutely no regard if you're doing something. They just jump in front of your pictures and stuff. People were physically pushing each other for the best photo spots. And sadly, manners just didn't seem to exist so far off the ground. The view from up here was definitely lovely, but to really understand the city, it was too high. You could only see the roofs of different places. And well, you can call me immature, but for me, this was the most memorable thing about the whole experience. You kinda just have to. And I guess the cherry on top was that when we wanted to go down, there was another 35 minutes of waiting in a line. Okay, I'm sort of happy that we tried climbing that thing, that we went up there, but... We can tell stories for you. We can tell stories for you. Um, I wouldn't recommend it to a friend. It's just, it was so much hustle, so much... It took a lot of time and it was expensive, like overpriced. And, and it, expensive. it was unpleasant, you like the arms and, and everybody was fighting over there. Like everybody felt that they paid $50 to get up there and they wanted to get their money's worth. And if you want to get a feel of Dubai, in my opinion, the view from the Dubai from frame. the frame was much better. I think for me, the city is lacking those uh, experiences, raw feeling of, of understanding another culture. But overall, I get a feeling that the city is a lot about shopping and a lot about climbing to high places and, and looking at the, mm -hmm. the structures and man-made things from another angle. If you have a lot of money to spend, you can get there faster, there are special queues, there's VIPs. If you don't want to spend a lot of money, this city is a lot about waiting. Friends, thank you for adventuring with us today. And we hope to see you back on the channel next Thursday, in a little bit less than a week. Bye. Bye.